Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 bad movies with good sequels. For this list, we'll be looking at films that missed the mark with critics and audiences, but somehow managed to pull off a decent sequel. We'll be discussing some major plot details, so a spoiler alert is in order. What's your favorite sequel? Or prequel? Tell us in the comments. Number 10. Suicide Squad, The Suicide Squad. The DC Extended Universe has suffered from tonal whiplash, and 2016's Suicide Squad best encapsulates this. What was that? I should kill everyone and escape? Sorry. The voices. <laughs> I'm kidding! Following DC's ragtag band of criminals as they're forced to fight other big bads, the movie bounces back and forth between wacky dark humor and gritty psychological trauma. While the first act in Belle Reeve is promising, and the hair and makeup earned an Oscar, the story was rushed, the action was uninspired, and Jared Leto's Joker left fans divided, at best. Oh, I'm not gonna kill you. I'm just gonna hurt you. Really, really bad. Five years later, James Gunn took the reins for The Suicide Squad. The sequel doubled down on the ridiculous premise, with over-the-top but well-executed action, humor, and storytelling, and subtle political commentary that better fit the pulpy comic book theme. Yo, is this a dog? What? Is, is this thing a dog? A, a dog? Yes. What, what kind, kind of dog do you think it is, mate? Number nine, House of a Thousand Corpses, The Devil's Rejects. Howdy, folks. Bloody blood, violence, freaks of nature. Well, then, come on down to Captain Spaulding's Museum of Monsters and Mad Men. Rob Zombie found fame as a heavy metal musician before venturing into filmmaking. However, his directorial debut, House of a Thousand Corpses, was regarded as a chaotic, exploitative, and gory mess. It has since gained cult status, but Zombie's approach would arguably have worked better for a music video than a full-length feature. Little Dickens, you. I know what your problem is. What's that? <laughs> Y'all think us folks from the country is real funny-like, don't you? Three particular characters did stand out, though. Otis, Baby, and Captain Spaulding. For his 2005 follow-up, Zombie capitalized on these three breakout characters and made The Devil's Rejects, which many now consider to be a grindhouse classic of sorts. What's the matter, kid? Don't you like clowns? Why? Hey, Don't hey. we make you laugh? Number 8. The Angry Birds Movie? The Angry Birds Movie 2. Most video game movies fall short of their source material success, and the same can be said for The Angry Birds Movie. And this is Terrence. More like terrifying. Adapting the mobile app that took the world by storm, the story follows the peaceful birds going on the warpath after the pigs steal their eggs. While a box office success, critics and audiences were not impressed by the thin plot and hit and miss humor. Why don't birds fly? I'm gonna tell you why. Because where else would we ever want to go? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Not a good joke. While the sequel made a lot less at the box office, it enjoyed much more praise, with critics and audiences preferring its brand of slapstick comedy and praising the performances of the voice actors. You mess with the hatchlings, you get the cannonball! Ready, big guy? Oh yeah! You ready, big guy? <laughs> Number 7. Annabelle, Annabelle Creation. The first spin-off in the Conjuring series, Annabelle is meant to be an origin story for the possessed doll that stole the show in the first film of the franchise. Instead, the film fell flat on its face, with critics and audiences unimpressed with its cliché jump scares. While the cast earned some praise, Annabelle left much to be desired, as it played directly into the old tropes that the Conjuring had broken away from. I felt how much it wants. Wants what? to take her soul. After The Conjuring 2, another Annabelle origin story came out, Annabelle Creation. Considered superior in every way, Creation is closer in tone and quality to the original Conjuring, and for the better. She's gone. She's gone. She's gone. <laughs> Number 6. X-Men Origins Wolverine Logan Hugh Jackman as Wolverine was one of the best things to come out of the X-Men franchise, so he was readily given a spin-off at the end of the original trilogy. I want new ones. What do you want them to say? Wolverine. 
Unfortunately, Wolverine's first solo flick was a critical bust. The scenes showing Logan's origins were highlights, but the ending famously featured subpar CGI and the butchered debut of Marvel's iconic Merc with a Mouth. Wait, is that you? Your striker finally figured out how to shut you up. The second installment, in which Logan travels to Japan, was better received, but it was a case of third times the charm, with 2017's Logan, hailed as a gritty, but also thoughtful and even poignant conclusion to the trilogy. Adamantium. If you are planning to blow your brains out, could you wait till you're out on the high seas? I just mop these floors. I don't need this shit. Number five, The Expendables, The Expendables 2. Sylvester Stallone brought together some of the greatest action stars of our time to form The Expendables, a team of mercenaries who specialize in the extreme. You should take the two on the right, not that fast anymore. The only thing faster is light. We'll see. A love letter to 80s and 90s action blockbusters, The Expendables is a classic shoot 'em up. However, the one liners are seldom as funny as intended, and the second act drags. Who sent you? <laughs> the sequel keeps it all action, all the time, with sprinkles of self-deprecating humor and ramps up the cast by adding Chuck Norris, Jean-Claude Van Damme, and even Arnold Schwarzenegger. Putting all efforts into the action and the one-liners, The Expendables 2 knows exactly what kind of movie it is. If I don't get this back, your ass is terminated. In your dreams. Trench, we got a way out. Number 4. Ouija. Ouija Origin of Evil. Coming out amidst the horror movie renaissance of the 2010s, Ouija was a critical failure of unbearable proportions. You ever feel like even after someone you love has died, there's still a way you can talk to them? You can't do that, she's gone. The board, isn't that what you're supposed to do with it? Based on the supposedly supernatural toys of the same name, Ouija was almost a parody of supernatural horror. The characters were stereotypical teenagers, played by actors who were clearly adults. The plot and dialogue were by the numbers, and the pacing was a slow crawl to an unsatisfying ending. Despite this, Ouija was a major financial success, thanks to its low budget. The money was put to good use making the prequel, Ouija Origin of Evil, which surpassed the original in all aspects and scored a very respectable 83% on Rotten Tomatoes, compared to just 6% for the original. The problem isn't the house. Not anymore. I've called the Archdiocese. The Vatican has people who investigate these things. I'll ask them to approve an exorcism. Shh, shh, don't say anything else. Number 3. Star Wars Episode 1 The Phantom Menace, Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith. The Star Wars prequel trilogy aged better than most would have expected, but it's still far from perfect. Are you an angel? What? An angel. I heard the deep space pilots talk about them. They're the most beautiful creatures in the universe. The Phantom Menace was a weak launch pad for this series after 16 years of anticipation. Even though it had a well-rounded cast, an amazing soundtrack, and one of the greatest lightsaber duels in the entire franchise, the film suffered from a slow pace, dated CGI, and poor humor delivered by a less than lovable Gungan. Gungans no liking outsiders, so don't expect a warm welcome. Oh, don't worry. This hasn't been our day for warm welcomes. Attack of the Clones wasn't much better. Despite this, the prequel trilogy went out in a blaze of glory with Revenge of the Sith, which saw the bloody conclusion of the Clone Wars, the destruction of the Jedi Order, and the birth of Darth Vader himself. Number 2. Fast and Furious, Fast Five. The Fast and Furious franchise has many highs and lows, but the fourth installment in the series, Fast and Furious, was the lowest when it came to critical consensus. Maybe you're the bad guy pretending to be the good guy. You ever think about that? While none of the films are lacking for action or stunt work, Fast and Furious suffered some of the weakest writing, storytelling, and character development in the franchise. Mostly just a loose framing device for the action, Dom Toretto and his crew had yet to become the family they're known as. Hey, say goodbye to your only brother. You don't. This was fixed in Fast Five, with Toretto and team having to go up against none other than Dwayne The Rock Johnson. 
The franchise has continued to cruise ever since, even hitting a new peak with Furious 7. We find them, we take them as a team, and we bring them back. And above all else, we don't ever, ever let them get in the cars. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Star Trek The Motion Picture, Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan Star Trek's impact on pop culture is beyond measure. Their first motion picture, however, leaves a lot to be desired. Mostly playing as a talk-filled drama, the motion picture was more like any given Star Trek episode extended to feature length. It won over hardcore Trek fans, but most newcomers were disappointed with the lack of action on the screen and slow pace. An alien object of unbelievable destructive power is less than three days away from this planet. The only starship in interception range is the Enterprise. The second feature film, Wrath of Khan, was a big leap forward with an amazing story, updated visual effects, and an iconic villain. It brought the franchise to new heights with some of the most memorable scenes in sci-fi history. I have been, and always shall be, your friend. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.